What's going on guys? Dan with PC Tech Hustle coming at you with another video and today we got a new client build behind me here and it was a build that I just sent to the client and now is back in my hands because it's wildly overheating. Overheating on this Wraith stock stealth cooler to a point where we're experiencing even thermal shutdown. So as you might see behind me I got a new cooler installed being a Hyper 212 Evo and we'll take a look at not only did I fix the issue with overheating, but also pulled about 20 to 25C off the normal operating temperatures of this chip. So let's get cracking into that coming at you right now. So first off, I kind of want to put back some history to this story here. So this was for a client. They you know got the PC. I've kind of just trusted AMD and seen that I've never had problems with temperature or anything like that before. We kind of, you know, put it together in a bit of a hurry, but we, you know, this isn't my first time doing PC builds, as you guys know. And uh, everything worked fine as far as, you know, installing Windows, getting drivers installed. So turned the PC over to the client and he started gaming and then mentioned the next day that after about 30 minutes or so, the PC was blue screening and shutting down. So Got to pan over to another camera here and show you guys kind of what I'm talking about in regards to this Ryzen and what we have going on that is, again, kind of shocked me. As you can see here, if uh, I just put the camera closer here, we're idling. Now we have some things open, so let's let's close things down here. Ryzen Master in the background here. We'll leave that open and Task Manager so we can kind of see our utilization to make sure that we are indeed basically at idle. We're reporting about 45 degrees-ish. It's still, I would say, on kind of a mild to high note. And what I'm seeing in HW Info 64 is obviously way high. So let's load up IDA 64. All right, we got IDA 64 about loaded up. I'll reset my temperatures within HW Info 64. Still in the 60s right now, which is pretty darn high for basically almost doing nothing. But here we go, starting up IDA 64. And we can see, look how fast that temperature climbs. 92 degrees within seconds. Now, Ryzen Master is a few degrees off, but there we go, we hit 90. I mean, that, that was like five to 10 seconds, if that. Ida's reporting like 85-ish. So I, honestly, I'm not entirely sure what to believe, but I do see that and that being those two programs kind of matching and, and temperature. So, and I know they're relatively spot on as far as truth because the client said he was getting thermal shutdowns. And if I let this run long enough, I'm gonna face the same problem. We already hit a max temperature of 98 here. So that is scorching hot. Like Ida 64, yeah, it's a stress test, but it's not, a stress test on like prime 95 levels where it is gonna just destroy your system as far as heat goes. So I'm really surprised with this. I would expect like Ida 64 maybe running the you know 70s, maybe low 80s, but we are sticking in the mid to high 90s right now. So again, like even with gaming, we're only really getting about 10 degrees cooler, and that is hot. That's very hot for a gaming scenario. I'd like to see a gaming scenario in the 60s, maybe low 70s at best. I would feel really comfortable seeing that. So anyway, I've been through several remounts of the cooler. Uh, I've been through several repastings, double checked cabling, uh, ran through many tests and it's all netted me the same result being high temperatures, dangerously high temperatures that as the client mentioned, you know, ca cause a thermal reboot or a thermal shutdown because the temperature just exceeds values that, and it, what is crazy to me here is this is all stock valued stuff. So we're not doing any overclocks. This is stuff you go, as we did, to Micro Center, bought the parts and put it in the system and it runs so hot to, you can't even do things like gaming that, yeah, it's a little more intensive a task than doing like a, you know, a word processor or something like that. But at the same time, like, even that, it's still hovering in the 60s, so I don't get it. But anyway, let's grab our Hyper 212, put it on the machine, and see what that gets us. So what we'll see here is, is that Hyper 212 gonna help the situation by pulling off some degrees in temperature? Hopefully, I'm 
a good amount because we're still very hot right now. And if it does, great, then we've got the problem solved. But I'm hoping to at least get this problem validated by putting that Hyper 212 on the chip and seeing what it'll do. So let's pan over to that, get that Hyper 212 installed, and then check back our temperatures and see if we've got any good positive results. All right guys, we are booting back into Windows. We just got the cooler installed. I have no idea what to expect yet. Hopefully good stuff. So let's see what we got. Got some things powering up. Well, I'd say that's a good start. Ryzen Master is reporting 34 to 35 degrees. 33-ish. Never seen it that low. So let's go over to HWinfo64. 37, 35, 34. I jumped to 50 there for a second. Some things are still loading up in Windows though. So uh, keep an eye on our task manager real quick. So yeah, I have not seen these temperatures yet. So I think the true test here will be to, let's hit it with Ida 64 and see if the temperatures go into the nine up into the 100 c range like they were before so let's go over to ida 64 for the true test here cross your fingers guys i have no idea what's about to happen i really hope i got these temps within reason all right one two three here we go starting up 73 74 Fans ramped up, but not in immediate 95 degrees. 76. Wow. This definitely shows us that the Hyper 212 is actually cooling it down to a point where its fan curve actually backs down a little bit. So it's not running at full max tilt. See, once we hit that 83, 82-ish temperature, it, it kicks up a little higher. I'll have to keep an eye on it, make sure it doesn't surge. But overall, we are staying 
20 plus degrees cooler with this Hyper 212. I mean, that's fantastic. I actually didn't think we were going to get that type of result, but very awesome. Very, very awesome. Alrighty, guys. So what else can be said here other than, well, if you're planning on going with a 3600, you might as well plan on spending a few extra dollars to get a, a cooler that is adequate for cooling because this stealth cooler, not the Spire, is not adequate for the 3600. This wasn't an in-depth look at, you know, what more performance you can get out of based on lower temperatures, how well does precision boost work and precision boost overdrive, any of that stuff. This was strictly, I built a system for a client and I had a problem, I had to get it fixed fast because they were experiencing thermal shutdowns while gaming while doing normal tasks um, as you can see when in the earlier bits of the video we were hitting 100 c on ida 64 now we've dropped 25 plus degrees off of that benchmark and in gaming i did take a screenshot i never saw above 76 and a half as a max my average being around 66 degrees so honestly that's where I wanted to see it to begin with. All in all, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video going on a little adventure with me. Uh, yeah, I was a bit nervous, you know, building up a rig and then handing it over to a client thinking it was going to be fine. And then the next day, them telling me, hey, it's thermally shut down blue screen. I'm like, what the heck? You know, this was a brand new build. I was not expecting that at all. But anyway, since we are talking about this build, I'll put all these parts in the description down below as Amazon affiliate links. So if you guys feel free to click on those and tailor this build as well. I mean, this is actually a really great gaming PC. It was what I consider a very mid-grade to upper mid-tier gaming PC that's got a lot of potential left in it. Obviously, we can upgrade CPU and GPU and all those things, but I'm really impressed with it. And it's, it's a very smooth, plain rig. And uh, I had an enjoyable experience after I got it in a very much cooler setting, cooler running scenario. Well, guys, don't forget to do the YouTube thing, right? Give me a like if you enjoyed this content. Give me a comment. Hopefully this was helpful for you guys if you've just bought yourself a Ryzen 5 3600 and are as shocked as I was seeing how hot your chip is getting. Know that it's normal. And I was a little scared that it wasn't gonna be, but it's normal. The chips run hot. They just don't come with adequate cooling. So get yourself something that works well. But other than that, guys, thanks for tuning into this one. I appreciate your time and I'll catch you in the next one.